You know, several years ago, we were having our Pride celebration, and we really uh, needed someone from the media to step up and help us get the word out about our mission. And I knew that we were going to have a new news anchor for WBNS 10 TV, and so I called her in Chicago. I kind of fished around for her phone number. Um, and I got her on the phone, and I said, you know, Kristen, you don't know me, uh, but uh, my name's Carla. And I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and you're going to be moving here, and I'm going to be your best friend ever. <laughs> and she said, really? No, I, I, <laughs> I said, I really need some help. Um, would you consider making us one of your causes when you come to work here? And she, without even meeting me, immediately said yes. And believe me, I was shocked. But I am so honored to have her here today. So please welcome Kristen Hartman, WBNS 10 TV anchor. Thank you, Carla. It was a no-brainer, by the way. And I have to tell you, 500,000. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that was a great crowd yesterday, wasn't it? I was just so proud to be in this city. You know, there's a backstory as to why it was so easy for me to say yes to Carla and be excited about it at the same time. Uh, that backstory goes back to a poem that my mom gave me as a kid. I was about eight or nine. She clipped it out of the newspaper. And um, it, it was a real simple little poem, but it has stuck with me my whole life. And I'll share a little bit of it with you. It was, every single blade of grass and every flake of snow is just a little different. There are no two alike you know. From something small like a grain of sand to that gigantic star, all were made with this in mind. Be just who you are. The be just who you are is what really resonated with me. And um, I had a cousin as a child. I, he was like an older brother to me. And sadly, he did not feel he could be just who he was. Uh, growing up, we came up in the 70s and the 80s. And the 70s and the 80s weren't nearly as accepting as the 2000s are. And we also came up in a very Catholic family. So, um, you know, why didn't he come out? I can only speculate because he never spoke of it with me. Um, but I think those couple of things had a lot to do with it. I do know this, you know, he married a lovely woman. He had three beautiful children. And it was only years after that that we learned he was gay. And it happened in a really, really painful way and now we're not even certain where he is. And to me, that is really heartbreaking when you consider he is an accomplished, smart, funny man uh, who had a lot to offer this world. And um, like I said, it's heartbreaking. That is one huge reason why I am so proud to support Stonewall Columbus, why I admire Stonewall Columbus's work. It's so very, very important. It has made it its mission to make sure people can be just who they are. And uh, that's life, you know, be just who you are. I'm proud, as I said, to be a part of this city. I was proud to be a part of the festivities yesterday. I'm proud to be hanging out with George Takei today and his husband, Brad. <laughs> George Takei is a guy who makes it totally cool to do this, and I'm going to try. I got it on the first try. <laughs> Amazing. Usually I have to do this with my fingers and pry them apart because it's not easy. Um, he has boldly gone where no 77-year-old pop culture icon has gone before. <laughs> he is a social activist. He is an actor. He is a master of social media. 7.1 million likes? Really? <laughs> 
I need to take some lessons from you. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause because that's hard. <laughs> He was the Grand Marshal, as you know, of this year's Pride Parade because of his global humanitarian work. I was fortunate to be able to speak with George for a 10 TV interview the other night, and we chatted about his past. Uh, for those of you who don't know, George and his family, after Pearl Harbor, ended up in a Japanese American internment camp, and he told me about the barbed wire that kept them in. And then we spoke about the invisible barbed wire that he experienced as a gay man. He has spent his life bringing down that barbed wire fence, and that deserves a huge round of applause. We honor you, George Takei, for being a voice, a voice for equality. Stonewall Columbus put five reasons we love George together. Okay, so uh, you gotta bear with me a little bit. We understand that you like to wink at your own image. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's tongue in cheek. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, you never forget your Star Trek fans. How many of you saw us Trekkies at the parade yesterday? I know I did. And I'm a Trekkie myself, so I'm loving this. Uh, so number two, doesn't forget his Star Trek fans. Number three, a big defender of grammar. I didn't know that about you. I love that about you. The mother tongue, a defender of the mother tongue on top of everything. You don't just make us laugh, you make us think. That is so important. And you and your husband gave us your time this weekend, your valuable time. How many of you knew George was in Japan just a short time ago, came back to LA, then got on a plane to get here to be part of our pride festivities? That deserves a round of applause too. On behalf of Stonewall Columbus, George, please come up and accept our gratitude. Thank you, thank you, and thank you for that oh my introduction. <laughs> it was a glorious morning yesterday, and here, there we were on a float, my husband Brad and our two predecessor uh, Grand Marshals, Steve Snyderhill and his husband Josh Snyderhill, and the float came down Broad Street, and we turned onto High Street, and it was an oh my reaction that I had. <laughs> it was amazing. As far as I, as I could see down, down that uh, boulevard, packed with beautiful, beautiful people. W wall to wall, the sidewalk was completely uh, filled with people. And I saw men holding another man's hand. I saw women holding another woman's hand. I even saw a man holding a woman's hand. <laughs> That's an oh my. 
as we say, infinite diversity in infinite combinations. I saw two men cradling a, a baby. I saw two women with a toddler. And I saw families with a mom and a dad and children there. Infinite diversity in infinite combinations. I saw older people, I saw young people, I saw all the rainbow colors of, uh, of races. It was a glorious, beautiful morning. And there we were with my husband and two other husbands, the former uh, uh, grand marshals, floating down that great high boulevard. And then we came to a street crossing and it said, Gay Street. <laughs> How eminently fitting and appropriate. <laughs> and we crossed gay and we saw more and more and more people. It was an amazing gathering of people. This is what America should be. A rainbow of people in infinite combinations celebrating joy, celebrating love, celebrating their families, and celebrating an absolute togetherness of joy and happiness and love. It was a beautiful sight. And I thought, we are living in a fantastic society because exactly a week from this week, the Supreme Court of the United States came down with a decision that struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. And it struck down California's hated Proposition 8 and restored marriage equality to California. <laughs> now California, Hawaii, Connecticut, Illinois, Iowa, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and 12 other states have marriage equality. It is an amazing phenomenon that's happening. And now a number of states, including Ohio, is awaiting the appellate court decision, which will bring, within the next two years, I predict, marriage equality to all those states as well. There is definitely the winds of political and social ch change happening in the United States. It is a thrilling experience here. And this is happening because of change agents. Change agents like your Ohioan, Steve Snyder Hill. We are, we've all heard about, read about, and seen his amazing questioning of the candidates for, for the presidency from the Republican Party in 2000. It was a courageous stand, but he is a soldier, and he stands for all the values that make the military what it is, honor, courage, and valor. Steve asked them, the Republican candidates for the presidency, and also candidates for the Commander-in-Chief of the military. Would you reinstate, don't ask, don't tell, when you become the president? And the uh, a shocking thing was, and I was watching this on TV, the people gathered there booed an American soldier serving in Iraq on the battlefield dodging mortars. It was a shocking sight and shocking sound to hear. Republicans who professed to support the military were booing an American soldier. And then there was another revelation. Absolute silence from the Republican candidates on stage. Talk about courage. Talk about hypocrisy. Talk about decency. Not a single 
Republican spoke out, a very telling silence. And then finally, that famous homophobic uh, candidate, Rick Santorum, spoke out. It was ridiculous, his, his commentary. <laughs> his ignorance was patently exhibited publicly. But Steve Snyderhill's question sent out ripples of reactions throughout. And it even happened on a major television series. Those of you that saw Newsroom powerfully commented on that event. It was something that all Americans were touched and moved and galvanized by. And it's people like Steve, who make change happen. And he's making it happen even more. He's got a new book called Soldier of Change coming out. I think all Americans should read that. It is a powerful documentary of his living under Don't Ask, Don't Tell, that invisible barbed wire fence it was, I read it, and it was a moving uh, 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 document, and a powerful document, and an inspiring document. And I was prompted to write the foreword to his book. It was an honor and a privilege. And I consider, and Brad does as well, one of the great honors that uh, the city of Columbus, Ohio has granted upon us to follow in his footsteps as the Grand Marshal of that amazing parade, Pride Parade, yesterday morning. And we learned so much about what's happening here in Columbus. We learned about the campaign to raise funds for Stonewall, a very eminently appropriate name, the Stonewall Inn, which was the initiator of the uh, gay liberation movement, and taking that name and creating a center for information, for aid, for support, and for all the things that we heard from Carla from this podium. But I thought it was most uh, humanly personified by Tom Grody and his still lively daughter. <laughs> we saw what Stonewall is doing. It is making for a more friendly human society. And that is an important thing to support. It is a pillar of this community, and that's why Columbus is such a great city in the heart of Ohio. <laughs> Tom's little one is still upstaging him. <laughs> And that is why we are so honored, Brad and I, to be here to particip participate in this event. We learn so much. You have added dimension to our lives. And we are proud to now consider ourselves a part of Columbus, Ohio. Thank you very much. Live long and prosper. Thank you very much. Thank you.